good morning everyone is always place across song first remember the enemy remember he comes in many forms he comes in the form of friends family members acquaintances co-workers mother father sister brother the enemy can jump into any soul that's not grounded just remember that so take that in mind if we're not grounded he can jump into us too and he can use us too that's why you gotta keep that arm on that's why you got to place that cross on first. You don't want to let the devil use you. You want to let God use you. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you for watching over me through it all. The weekend, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the word that you've given me over this past week. Lord Jesus, I ask you to continue to watch over me, my wife, our children, all those who we come in contact with, Lord Jesus. I ask you to use me as you seem fit today to bring forth this word in our honesty and our truth. Send your Holy Spirit to comfort and to assist me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You see, I was going to read from Acts today. But sometimes you got to switch it up a little bit. I'm sure I'm going to go back to it. Sure God going to lead me back to it. But I'm going to read from Proverbs today. This is all about instruction. If you read a lot from Proverbs, you can see instruction is everywhere throughout the Bible. Instructions. If you're giving instructions, that means you got to be obedient to the instructions. Right? Nobody gives instructions just for people not to pay attention to them. You get instructions because it involves obedience. That means if I'm instructing you to do something, if God is instructing you to do something, that means take heed to what's being said to you and listen and do what's being instructed. That's part of God's commandments. That's part of God's commands. Let's go to Proverbs. Be not, be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. That's instruction right there. That's instruction. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. So you got to use your discernment. That could involve instructions. That involve obedience. You got to know what an evil man is. You got to know what an evil woman is. Got to use your discernment. Desire not to be with them. Right? That's judgment. Righteous judgment through the spirit. <clears throat> For their heart study of destruction and their lips talk of mischief. Did you hear what they said? For their heart study of destruction and their lips talk of mischief. They are mischievous people. Their heart is not right with God. And guess what? They trying to lead you to destruction too. What did this devil come to do? To destroy. And the devil uses people. The wisdom is in house building. And by understanding is it established. What wisdom? This wisdom. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. So the stronger you are in this word, the stronger you are spiritually. The stronger you are to resist the enemy. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Good counselors, good counselors, because you can be in the. They go back to the first one. Be thou thou envious against evil men, not a desire to be with them, for their hearts study of destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. So if you got these kind of counselors in your life, guess what? They're gonna destroy you. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. And in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. Good counselors. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He opened him not his mouth in the age. He that advises to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. He that advises to be, do evil is called a mischievous person. I don't care who you are. If your heart is designed to be, do evil, you are mischievous. The thoughts of foolishness is sin, and the scorn is an abomination to men. If thou faint in a day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. You're going to go through adversity. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn into death and those that are ready to be slain. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not. Doth not he that punish the heart consider of it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he run into every man according to his works? Run into every man according to his works. So make sure your works are good, not evil. My son, eat thy honey because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to the taste. So shall thy knowledge of wisdom be under, unto thy soul when thou hast found it. Then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. So this is a warning 
for people who try to do evil against the righteous. Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth, and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbleth. So even if they are your enemies, you aren't supposed to be happy when somebody falls. You're supposed to be happy when somebody goes through dark things. Even if you told them, you're supposed to be sorrowful. Be like, wow, man, I wish you would have listened. And you're supposed to uplift them. But that don't mean don't tell them. Lest the Lord see it and be displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. If you turn away from his wrath from him, guess what he's saying? He's going to turn away his wrath from him to you. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither thou be envious at the wicked. Don't worry about the wicked. Don't be envious of them. Because you know why Christians always fall? They're like, they always doing something bad, but they always make it out. It's like, uh, uh, whatever. God sends rain on the just and the unjust. Who are you? For there shall no be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. All you gotta do is wait on the Lord. Be patient. He's gonna do exactly what he's gonna do for everybody. He's gonna reward everybody according to their works. There's nothing you have to do. No need to be envious. No need to be covetous. No need to be hateful. Guess what? The Lord is watching. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. Given to change. For the last few years, in the presence, it's always change. Be not easily given into change. What change? Change the Lord's words. Change the Lord's commandments. Going against the Lord. That's the kind of change he's talking about. Because the God, the God's word does not change. The world encourages change. Not God. Only God, don't worry, God wants you to change this back to him. And then you'll know what to do. For that calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knows the ruin of them both? These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect to persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, Turn thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, the nation shall abhor him. So guess what? You can't call evil good and good evil. It is what it is. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight. And a good blessing shall come upon them that do what? Rebuke evil. Every man shall kiss his lips that giveth a right answer. Prepare thy work without and make it fit for thyself in the field. And as will build thine house. Be not a witness against thy neighbor without cause and deceive not with thy lips. Say that I will do so to him as he hath done to me. I will run to the man according to his work. Why? Because judgment belongs to the Lord. Let him do evil. Let him do evil. You do good. I went by the field of the slothful man, and by the vineyard of the man who void of understanding, and lo, it was all grown over, with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall there was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. A little proverbs today. That means don't be lazy. Don't be slothful in business. You know, you think you're just going to pray and pray and pray and, and not do anything? No. You got to get out there and work, oh slothful person. You know, these instructions are for your benefit. You, you'll take good to take heed to the words that God tells you in regards to certain things. You can't hang with evil people and expect your life to be well. I'm telling you, I'm going to go to the spiritual realm on you right now. I'm going to go to the spiritual realm on you. If their hearts are designed to be evil, who will sway are they on us? I talked about this last week. You got the spirit of truth and you got the spirit of error. The spirit of error causes people to do evil. The spirit of truth causes people to do righteousness. You understand? So if you're hanging around people that do evil, you better be careful. Those demons are going to jump on you and tear you apart. You better use your discernment. You understand? It's okay to sit with sinners. Yes, it is. But you got to understand what your mission is as a Christian. What's your mission as a follower of Christ? To be like them or to try to lead them to the Lord? You got to understand what your mission are when you leave the house. Is your mission to be like them or to lead people to the Lord? You understand, that's where a lot of Christians fall victim. They try to hang around evil people, mischievous people, and they wonder why their house can't get peace. 
They want to count why their life can't get peace. You understand? The devil wants you to keep running to and throw. To and throw. The devil wants you to try to play God. Let me tell you something, people. You cannot be God. You can't. The word says specifically certain things. Who can make straight which God has made crooked? No one can. You can't change people. If people don't want to change, they ain't going to change. If they don't want to come to the Lord, they ain't going to change. And the people don't like to hear that. I believe prayer works, but I believe it's a two-way streak. People got to want the prayer. People got to want the repentance. People got to want to live a righteous life. If they don't want to live a righteous life, God is not going to make them live a righteous life. And you can't make them. If God won't make them, you can. Do you understand? You see, a lot of times you don't grow as a Christian because you figure you can change everyone. But you can't. When you work in the operating the spirit, God lets you know who to talk to. Who you can reach. Don't get to the point where they're trying to play God. The enemy loves it. He loves it. He's lying in wait for you to try to play God. You understand? I'm going to tell you some people. I've been walking with Christ for about 11 years. Probably 11 years to today. And guess what? I pray for a lot of people. And I'm sure you have to. You pray for a lot of people. Let's go back to scripture right quick. The one and the 99. He said the righteous be scarcely be saved. What about the wicked? They got to want to be saved. The one and the 99. Think about one and 99. That's a 1% ratio. You understand? A 1% ratio. You understand? A lot of times when you go out, you're not after everyone. Jesus said, go after the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel. Go after the lost sheep. If they don't hear, go to the Gentiles. You understand? Read between the lines, people. You can't save everybody. I'm going to tell you something, man. Some people are designed to destroy. Some people work for somebody that you don't work for. And guess what? They say the devil comes as an angel of light. But you got to be take heed to a lot of things that's been said to you. You got to read Proverbs. You got to read James. You got to read John. You got to read Samuel. You got to read 1 Kings. You got to read Chronicles. You got to read the book of Moses. You remember when Moses was preaching to so many people, trying to reach everybody and tell them the word of God. Like the more he preached, the more some people fell off. The more some people fell away from God. And it wasn't because Moses wasn't preaching the word correctly. It because they didn't want it. Because their heart was evil. Then Moses changed everyone. You have to ask yourself a question. Did Moses change every soul? All Moses did was tell them the truth. It's up to them to hear it and accept it. You understand? You remember when Moses tried to fight for the people? I love to tell this story because it's a, it's a lot of messages within this one story. A lot of messages within this one story. When Moses had just gave the people commandment before he even went to visit God at the top of the mountain and get the commandments for them. He had, he's like, God's got to make you priest for them. They were like, okay, we will. We down for this. Moses left for a few days. Left for a few days. It's up to them to do what they're supposed to do after you tell them what you tell them. Do you understand? That doesn't mean you got to babysit. That doesn't mean you got to babysit a human being. No. No. You tell them what you need to tell them. It's up to them to do the right thing. It's up to them to make their own choices. Do you understand? Let's go back to the story. Moses went up there to get the Ten Commandments. The God is making Ten Commandments for them by his own hands. But he had already gave them commandments before he went to get the commandments. So he already told them what was going to happen. I'm going to make you priests for me. Oh, the Moses delay is coming. Let's make gods like the rest of them. So everything that you just told them went in one ear and out the other. 
Let's go back to the sower and the seed. As soon as they hear the word, the devil comes along and takes it away from them. And the second time, when trials and tribulations endure, they fall away. Do you understand those two stages right there? Are dangerous. You got some people just spreading the word so they hear with gladness right then. They receive the word with gladness. As soon as you leave their prison, they go right back to what they were doing. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You don't have to keep beating the word into no soul. Anyway, back to the story. Do you understand, people? Listen to me. Listen to me today. Listen to what the Lord has told me to tell you. Moses was gone for a few days. Moses delayed his coming. Even Aaron was weak in the flesh, weak. I come to people, please, and try to do what the people want. Hey, Aaron. Moses delayed his coming. We need to make us a golden calf out of the worship, girl. Aaron didn't even dispute with them. Aaron said, okay, bring all your jewels, your earrings, and everything right there, and I'll make it for you. Wow, Aaron. Is it Moses' fault? Is it Moses' fault? By no means. Moses relayed the message. It's up to them to keep the message and keep the words that were given to them. Disobedient rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. I ain't come here to sugarcoat anything for you. That's not what God called me to do. He didn't call Moses to sugarcoat anything. Fast forward a little bit. Upon finishing the 10, God was like, hey man, Moses, you might want to get back down there to your people. They doing some things they shouldn't be doing. I'm about to destroy them. Lord, don't destroy them. Don't. That'll be like you brought them out here in the wilderness to destroy them. Don't do that, Moses. I mean, God, don't do that to them. I'm going to tell you something. Moses did something that God was displeased with. Always striving for the people. Trying to intervene. Trying to play God. You understand? I bet a lot of people don't see that. Sometimes... You trying to keep stepping in and play God can disrupt things, can disrupt your soul, can hurt you, can stop you from entering the promised land. Always trying to please the people, always trying to fight for people who don't even want the word. Some of us are like fighting for the people. He come down from the mountaintop. It's weird how his mood, his mold changed to God mode, to God's will. By the time he got down to the bottom of the mountain, he felt what God felt when he was at the top of the mountain. God was angered. And as soon as Moses get down, he got angry too. Why? Because he worked for the Lord. It's not wise to question God sometimes. It's not wise to question him, especially if you say you're gonna do something, right? God knows what's going on. All he wants you to do is relate a message. So upon returning, Moses took the Ten Commandments. He was so angry. You see, people forget about this part of the Bible. I'm going to say something, and I'm going to say something. They say God is not angry. God does not get angry. That's a lie. That's a lie. They say God is angry with the wicked every day. They say God is slow to anger. Slow to anger. Did you hear what I said? He's slow to anger. Slow to anger. How often in the wilderness did they rebel against God? Uh, they questioned him. They questioned his authority. They questioned what he could do. Slow to anger. Well, give him what? Smack the rock. Give him manna. Give him quail. Give him, please. Give him, give him, give him. Give him, give him, give, 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 uh, uh, Woo! After so long. That anger turns to the wrath of God. And the same goes for us today. Let me finish the story before I get to that part. Slow to anger. 
You better read your word. You can't just do what you want to do. You know why you think you can do what you want to do? Because God is slow to anger. <laughs> He's merciful. He's graceful. His mercy endures forever. You understand? Do you understand? But it's slow. Time after time. Time after time. Correction after correction. Correction upon correction. Correction upon correction. Correction upon correction. Upon correction. Okay. Enough. It's enough. Now it's time for you to feel the wrath. You just took my kindness for weakness. You just took my mercy for weakness. Moses came down, crushed the golden calf to dust. Moses must have been filled with superhuman strength at that time. Because it's kind of hard to crush gold into dust, the ground gold into dust. You know the spirit was in him. Slow to anger, but when he gets angry, beware. Something's about to happen. Something about to happen. Who knows if he's going to turn his wrath? Who knows? Nobody knows. That's why you got to be careful. So these people, they were offered instruction. Basically, choose now who you may serve. You want to go back to like it used to be? Or you want to continue on with me and my servant Moses? I guess they were thinking his mercy was still there for a while. They thinking he was going to give them a slap on the wrist like he gave them all the other times. But this time, there was no slap on the wrist. Instant judgment from the Lord. Instant judgment. Instant judgment. Let me pause for a second. I will continue.